Hi, welcome to TGN Ch YouTube channel. I'm Jason. Today we will be talking about Synology's Flash Station. All right. So I have in real life two units of Flash Station. Okay. So on my right, I have the FS three four zero zero. On my left, I have the FS six four zero zero. Okay. So first and foremost, let's go through what are the some of the major differences between the two of them. Okay. So let's take a look at the CPU, all right, before we actually look at the physical, all right. So on the FS3400, you have a Xeon D1541, all right, it's one single CPU attached on the motherboard itself, okay, and it has 8 core, all right, and default it has 16 gig of DDR4 ECC RAM, okay. For the RAM memory for the FS3400, you can maximize it all the way up to 128 GB. That's with four units of 32 GB DDR4 ECC RAM. Now, do remember when using add-on products to stick to Synology, all right, do not use any other third-party devices, okay? So Synology has the RAMs that are appropriate for use on all its NASs, okay? So take note of that. now. When well, I'm jumping over to the FS6400, what you're going to have is you're going to have the Xeon Silver. It basically has two CPUs on board, on the motherboard, right? Being that they're both on the same size casing, all right? Now, for the FS6400, basically also you have an 8 core CPU, but you have two CPUs. The default RAM itself is 32 GB of ECC DDR4, all right? And maximum, you can go up to 512 GB, all right? So you can put up to 16 units of 32 GB DDR4 ECC RAM. Okay, so that's a very, very huge jump between the two of them, be it that they're both on the same size. If you will see that both of them actually have the same number of drive bay, which is 24, and you can maximize and up to them for up to 48 bays, all right? By using the FS, the RX1217 SAS, you have two units, or you can add the FX2421 times two, all right, so you get two units of that. Now, of course, in terms of storage space, what you need is basically to use two and a half inch SSDs or use two and a half inch HDD, all right. Of course, for SS SSDs, you have the option of SAS or SATA, all right. And in terms of maximum volume, for a single size, you can go up to one petabyte, all right, but to do that, remember you have to maximize your RAM memory. All right, you'll notice that in most of my videos, or in fact, I'm actually actively promoting that to increase the RAM memory. As we are now not just using the NAS just for data dump or plain storage, we are actually running applications of them. All right, so it's always a good option and good idea to add and increase your RAM memory. That's always the first option. Now, in terms of single volume size, all right, the major key difference between the two of them, the 3400 and the 6400 is, for the 3400, the maximum is 100 TB, okay? So your maximum is 100 TB for volume. If you want to go 200 TB, you definitely need to increase your RAM to 32 GB minimally, all right, minimally, okay? Now, as usual, they are hot swappable in terms of the drives, okay? Now, the next one will be the network ports, all right? So in terms of network ports, for the 3400FS, you have four 1GB LAN ports, okay? Of course, you can do either as link aggregation or failover, all right? Whereas for the FS6400, you have two 1GB LAN ports, all right? And you can, of course, do either as link aggregation or failover, all right? So these are the usual networking stuff, all right? Now, in terms of 10 GB, both of them equally have two 10 GB ports, okay? And of course, all the usual um, USB ports and also the expansion ports, all right? Now, in terms of PCIe expansion, take note, for the 3400, they only have one expansion slot, okay? So be very careful about what you're going to use to add on for the FS3400 as compared to the FS6400. Now, for the FS6400, you have the option of adding up to two add-on cards, all right? So that's to say that you can add on an M2D20, you can add on a E10, G20, uh, E10 or E25, G21. So you can add on extra add-on cards, okay? So now, in terms of the noise, ver noise, okay? The 6400 runs slightly quieter, okay? It's about 53 dB, as compared to the 3400 running about 57 dB, all right? In terms of power usage, 
the 3400 is running on 500 watts as compared to the 6400 where it's running on 800 watts okay power consumption of course there's going to be some differences all right so just if power is a very big issue for you read up on the data sheet if you need to calculate to in order for the data center or the data rack to be very green okay all the information is definitely all available on the data sheet for you to do all your manual calculation on BTUs, okay? How you want to do your calculation for your power, it's all written down for you in the data sheet from an official Synology website, all right? So now, in terms of certification, of course, as usual, all right, they will all be valid with all the ULs and all the other stuff, the FCC, okay? Now, warranty is going to be five years hardware warranty, okay? Other than that, um, accessories wise, you actually come with the main unit and then followed by the accessories pack and then followed by two power cords. All right, now there are two power supplies for both of them. All right, so they will have the redundancy. Okay, so don't worry about that. Other than that, the maximum number of connections. All right, for the 3400, the maximum number is up to 4000 as compared to the FS6400 where you can do up to 8,000 okay so if your connection is a issue consider that and think about that all right and the next key one would be on the mail pass all right the 6400 can support up to 1100 concurrent users all right as compared to the 6400 it can go up to 2200 users so it actually doubles all right and if you're going to use it for surveillance similarly the number of cameras okay for the 3400, it can go as high as 100 cameras. As compared to the 6400, it can go as high as 150 camera license. Okay? So with the next max amount of number of cameras, you can actually get the maximum number of FPS for the camera. Okay? So in terms of using it as a surveillance station, you always consider to calculate the FPS to know how many cameras you can actually utilize because it ends up with the resolution and the resolutions actually consume quite a fair bit in terms of the FPS also. Okay, so take note of all these two. All right. Now, moving forth, before we actually open up and take a look at the internals of the hardware. Okay. Now, if you're going to be using it for visualization, okay, the number of VMs that you can run on the 3400 is up to 16 as compared to uh, FS36400 where you can run up to 32 okay so you can run up to 32 but to do that you definitely need to add on your license okay especially for the virtual DSM alright so now let me open up the unit itself and let's take a look at it technically inside all the structure okay SSDs all right and followed by you have one more slot available for you okay so you have only one expansion slot here all right and all the other network ports over here okay so take note of that now to install the RAM for the 3400 okay it's pretty easy just snap them on and that's it okay not as complicated as the 6400 which I will show you later okay this is the power supply okay and basically that's the whole structure of the unit itself now if you want to take a look at the cpu fan okay so these are the fans that are on board that is helping to cool down the cpu okay so these are the four fans which are actually on uh, modular so you can just plug them out and change it up if it's faulty okay so very easy and very simple i'm going to leave that open for you guys to take a look now let's jump over and skip over to the 6400 okay so i've opened up the 6400 and you can see that there's two slots available for you and of course they have the onboard dome and the cpus okay so there are two cpus as written here all right so the cpu1 and cpu2 and of course it has its own uh, cpu fans as per what you can see on the 3400 except you don't see the memories okay the ram memories are actually below here these two portion in order to gain access to them you have to detach this bar okay through the two screws 
Okay, remove this, and then you have to remove the whole CPU fan ventilation fan flow in order to access the RAM to add on any more RAMs. Okay, so this is going to be a little more complicated. Six four zero zero is definitely a lot more complicated. Okay, so take note of that. If you're going to install anything, you'll take a lot more time. Okay, now in terms of the PSU, there's also two units of PSU. Okay, so there's the redundancy. Everything is in place, okay, there are redundancy thought of and very very well thought of. Okay. The design overall uh, is very very unique. Okay. Um, other than that, um, there isn't anything major to really cover it. Okay. Take note of the expansion, there's a PCI PCIe 8X. Okay. Now, other than that, okay, in terms of the functionality, you will still be running everything on DSM. All right. Uh, of course, you can of course go up to DSM 7.0. Not an issue. Okay. Now, if you have any questions with regards to today's video, please do leave us some comments. Okay. If you have enjoyed our channel, please remember to subscribe to our channel. Okay. And also like our video. All right. If you have any questions as usual, please remember to leave us a comment. Thank you very much.